Hey everybody, hope you're all doing all right out there. I want to talk about the Chinese spy balloon, which has been coursing its way through American airspace and the media in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's a very interesting case, not just for what's happened there, but the way that it was reacted to or in many directions. So let me just sort of talk about it a little bit. If you're unaware of what I'm talking about, a weather balloon, so a very large balloon with like a gantry underneath it appeared uh, in the airspace, American airspace above Alaska on the, let me just double check my notes here, the 28th of January. Uh, it then continued to travel down. It came into Canadian airspace where NORAD tracked it and then it came back into US airspace as it came on down. It was heading towards the Maelstrom uh, air bases. So there was some Pentagon officials getting very concerned about that. At the time this was going on, it was believed to have come from China, although China hasn't didn't actually confirm that until the 3rd of February, the day before they shot it down. Um, China basically before then said, we don't know, uh, let's find out what it is. And they came back and said, oh no, that's fine. You know, it's just a civilian weather balloon, which has been blown off course. The reason, well, one of the reasons this might not be entirely believable to some, and I'm gonna go into both sides in this, is the fact that this isn't the first time it's happened. In fact, it happened three times while Trump was in power. You know, it's, it's not a new thing, it's just it really got noticed this time. I don't know if they were traveling at a higher altitude before, but at 60,000 feet, a balloon of this size was noticeable to the human eye. And, you know, using some very basic things like an iPhone, you could zoom in and get a reasonable view of it. So it wasn't exactly hidden. It was first seen on the 28th of January, and by the 3rd of February, the Chinese had said, it's just civilian, it's not a problem at all. Uh, on the 4th of February, the Americans shot it down. Uh, they used an F-22 Raptor that was flying at 58,000 feet that fired an A-9X Sidewinder missile, very much like this one, which I have videos on. They fired the missile at the balloon, which was at an altitude of 60 to 65,000 feet, popped it, actually did a pretty direct hit on it, so I hope they've got enough left to be able to tell what it was, uh, at which point it fell. Now, of course, a lot of people have previously said to this, shoot it down, just shoot it down. And in fact, I believe there are some states where they were having to say, can you please stop shooting at the balloon? You're not gonna hit it. To put this into perspective, because I've heard this from a lot of people, the longest sniper shot ever taken was 3,450 meters, quite a shot. Unfortunately, the balloon is at 18,000 meters, which is five times further straight up. Uh, so the chances of you hitting this with small arms fire, let alone even rifle fire, it, unlikely. That's why it wasn't just easily shot down. I'm also assuming they used a missile because most of the missile is destroyed in blowing it up, opposed to just a quick burt of guns. A lot of people were criticizing that it hadn't been shot down sooner, uh, but they assessed it and said it was no great risk, probably because it was nothing new. Uh, and when they did shoot it down, they did it as it was over the sea, about five miles off the American coast. That's within the 12 miles of international uh, waters, not beyond the 12 mile mark where it goes to international waters. So they were able to recover it. And also it was in water of a depth of about 50 meters. So it should be easy to recover. So at this point in time, it has actually been shot down, but what it actually is hasn't been confirmed yet. And that is kind of amazing when you realize how much discussion, how much, you know, asking the experts, asking this person, asking that person about this has gone on, how much the media has claimed, how much people have, there's even cases now of, of repercussions coming on the back of whether someone didn't, you know, whether Biden didn't get it shot down in time or, or the fact that it was left that long, even though we don't know what it is yet. It, and this is the point about the modern world. People are so impatient, they're not even willing to wait for the, the truth, for the evidence, for the actual facts, and they'll just take a little snippet and run. Now, this is something I, I, I really concentrate on a lot. I am so willing to say, I don't know when I don't know. I do not know what that balloon was yet, because the evidence has not been put forward. It doesn't matter how many, oh, it was more likely this, it was more likely that that, that, that goes on. The more that the media speak to, experts and get their opinion on it. It doesn't matter because we don't know. So without concrete evidence right now, there's two sides kind of formed out this that I've seen a lot of questions brought up as to well, why this and then maybe here's an answer. So I'm gonna run through a few of these because it's things that will naturally come to your mind and maybe some things you may not think of. So one of the most obvious ones is why on earth would the Chinese use 
a weather balloon as a spy balloon opposed to the satellites that they've definitely got and the spies that are in the country and you know the internet which they can hack and it's notoriously easy to get into government stuff because they never do anything better than a password than password one or maybe password backwards i don't do hacking i'm just saying i've heard their passwords are laughable for the level of security of what they're holding on to so the whole idea of having to go to the lengths of having a sodding balloon it makes it a little preposterous then you could go on to well okay well if it was a spy balloon why use a balloon what are you trying to gather that you couldn't from those sources well okay radio frequencies although i thought you could probably pick those up mostly from satellites lower level photographic reconnaissance but google earth exists and then again you have spies on the ground i don't understand why you would go down this road and the other side to it is that if China was trying to be covert about this, they know that it's most likely going to get detected. They know that in that case it's most likely going to get shot down. And then they know that if they do get their hands on the equipment that was hanging underneath it, they'll know the intentions. They should be able to tell if, well, that's a pressure sensor, that's a temperature sensor, or that's a wideband radio frequency like receiving unit, etc. etc. You know, whatever it's doing. So it's it seems quite of a silly idea of being covert by being obvious, but what do we know? Some arguments that I've heard along the lines of, well, it is a spy balloon because, uh, consist of things like, because it came from China, so by default it must be spying, which may or may not be correct, who knows, but they are known for, you know, spying but then every country is known for spying on each other that's one of the things when people are like oh my god the china sent a balloon to to america and they're spying on them do you think that no one from america is spying on anyone else i'm sorry that's not the case everyone's spying on everyone and then everyone plays innocent when anything happens until they get caught let's bring up the famous u2 being shot down that wasn't shot down but was shot down that was a weather balloon to start with so if it turns out that it actually is a spy balloon, why might the Chinese risked this international tension? I've seen some people saying uh, that shooting the balloon down was an act of aggression towards China. No, the balloon in American airspace is what I think would be considered the act of aggression. Uh, you can shoot things down in your own airspace if they weren't supposed to be there, that's absolutely fine. And China would probably do the exact same thing were it the other way around. But as I say, if it is a spy balloon, why might have they done this? Well, as I said earlier, testing the dumbest, lowest levels of security. You know, some bank's got some really high tech vault with all these different systems and everything. And as it turns out, all it took was someone to knock in a little grate at the back and climb through the window. It doesn't matter if it's a low level, dumb attack. If it works, it works. So that, plus something I've heard from a few people, which is that the, the Chinese military, the government, uses a methodology of basically risk everything to find out whatever you can. If it comes in the name of national security, do it all. Right up until the point that you actually end up getting into a conflict and then you back off. So, you know, should this be a spy balloon? Okay, so the Americans have shot it down. They go, yep, this is a spy balloon. You were spying on us. The Chinese are just going to go, oh, uh, uh, no, it wasn't. And that's where it's going to end because America's not going to want to start a war over a single balloon when they know just as well that they're bound to be doing stuff in return already. Now to be clear here, I am not standing up for China or America on the basis I want to try and make this as impartial as possible. I want to try and give the information that makes the most sense from both sides of this argument that I've seen. But as you've seen so far, it's all conjecture. It's all assumptions. No one knows what this thing is until they get hold of the gantry from underneath it and they actually find out what that thing is. Going back slightly to people saying about, oh, they got mad that it wasn't shot down sooner. I have a suspicion that there may have been mobile ground jamming stations, vehicles, you know, radio jammers out there. Uh, following it. The reason I say that is because I've heard that some measures were taken to limit its effect. Well, the only thing I can think to limit its effect, other than sticking an AIM-9 AIM sidewinder through the side of it, is jamming it right, uh, with radio frequencies. So I assume they did that. It would make sense that they do. And at the point of filming this, as I say, it's been shot down. Still, we do not know, but I could go and find you a ton of articles that are going into depth now about all the spy, Chinese spy balloon and all the different things they've pulled out of that. And it's like, none of you know anything. You've all pulled that out of your butts because it's still in the sea as, as the point of recording this. And that's what I'm getting at here. You've seen this whole media circus happen. Of course, most of this, or a lot of this, the reason the media latch onto it is because 
Chinese spy balloon, what a title. That gets people clicking straight in. As we now know, the news is clickbait. Pure, pure, pure clickbait. The titles, the stories, they try and, you know, one person goes missing or dies and that suddenly becomes the story because it's in some way grabbed people. Uh, but something that's a little more mundane, maybe they're not such a likeable character or something like that, maybe they're just a normal person off the street without a great interesting story, that's not gonna get talked about because that's not gonna get you the clicks, that's not gonna get people emotionally involved. Uh, you'll always notice some emo emotional involvement. With this, with a spy balloon, I think this falls into the category of bizarre. Like, have you heard about Let's also bring up the fact that every single piece of news nowadays is breaking news. Even though when I was a kid, breaking news was when they stopped a program on TV for something seriously important, like when 9-11 happened, for instance, or when the Queen died or something like that. Not when they just get any news, like breaking news. It's not breaking news, you're just pronounce, like giving it now. That doesn't make it... And the media is getting too powerful because people are listening to them because they don't question stuff anymore. They read the title, they read the headline, and they just go. Or like when you make videos like this, I can guarantee you a lot of the comments in the comments below this video are from people who haven't watched what I have to say. So they're probably going to repeat some point that I've said in this video, like some, haha, I've got this moment. Or you, it just might be obvious. I, mean, I do hope most of you, if you are commenting on this, have watched it and you're going to give a reasonable, your thoughts on it. We're all welcome to give an opinion here because that's all it is. And of course, let's not forget that when the truth comes out, that's just going to be the truth we're given. We only know as much as we are given. Unless you've gone and physically checked yourself, you can only trust that information as much as the people who gave it to you. And if you're getting your information from the media, if you're getting it through the governments, as recent times have shown, propaganda is a thing and our truth is maybe not the truth. Obviously some of this can sound a little bit close to conspiracy theory, so let me just clear that side up too. I only believe what we can supply evidence for. I personally think it is more likely that this is a genuinely innocent weather balloon that's just been blown off course. Some people go, that's just so naive. I agree, but I have, it could be, and, and, and the likelihood is, well, I don't know, that's the point. I don't want to commit either direction. People are just too willing to commit to a direction without any reason to commit to it. And if, if they're an opposing argument to yours, well, then they just go 100% you're wrong. And why am I, you know, what does it come down to? Because I said so. So I'm not predisposed into going into any particular direction unless the evidence is there and it makes sense. Is it a spy balloon? Isn't it a spy balloon? Does it matter by this point? Look at the media circus. You know, it, it's, it's been injected into the, the psyche of the public. It's had fear from some, it's had anger from others. You've got arguments going on now against political sides backwards and forwards. People have had their discussions, they've made their opinions and now that's set in stone. And this is why it's just sad to think that if there is some like big conspiracy behind the world, well then we're just too dumb to beat it because people just fall for it hook, line and sinker. And then I'll get the conspiracy theorists going, yeah, like reptiles, they're definitely real. Give me evidence. And a picture of Bill Clinton sneezing is not it. It's like a switch, not a dimmer. It's either on or it's off. You're either this or you're that. You either believe in it or you don't believe it. And if you don't believe in this thing I believe in, well, now we are just dead to each other. And discourse ends there. Friends don't want to discuss stuff because if you do try and discuss something, you know, it might end up being in an argument and that, you know, it's relationship destroying for people to talk to each other at this point because everyone's so wound up and maddened by everything. And that is why I wanted to talk about this because yeah, as I say, this is just about a weather balloon or a spy balloon. Immaterial what it was really, it won't make any great difference, but to see how it's played by the media, to see how it's played on people and how people are willing to just pick a side and run without any evidence, just reading the headlines, it's, um, it's terrifying. There is nothing else to say for it than that. And I know there's a few people out there, lots of people out there, I hope more than, than they think there is, that are thinking like the same as me, like, uh, am I taking crazy pills? Because it's, I used to think I was the crazy one. And nowadays it feels like I'm the only sane one. <laughs> now, again, that's not me saying I am right and everyone else is wrong and why I decide is right is right. That's the point. It's this middle ground of just, it's the willingness to say, I don't know. It needs to be said so much more. And a lot less stuff from people who have no reason to know what they're talking about.
But that's beside the point. Uh, if, if you've got anything to add to this, if you think this is an interesting discussion, as I say, comments are below, go for it. I'm always very interested to read your thoughts. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you'd like to help support this channel, then please consider doing that through Patreon. Links in the description. This is a channel which does all sorts of things. Uh, but if a subject like this comes up and I feel like it has a social uh, lesson or something I can talk about that's a good example we can all see, then I'm going to do it. Anyway, till the next one. Bye-bye.